in my market, what typically happens is one of two things. The seller ends up buying out the lease or an agent that is well-versed in the benefits of solar is able to transfer the lease and sell the benefits of, let's say, paying an $80 a month lease payment for your energy versus the $250 that you know the seller was getting charged prior to that. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds, it's the Appraiser Coach Podcast, helping appraisers increase their efficiency, quality, and make more money. Here's the guy who makes it his life's mission to create value for real estate appraisers nationwide. Your host and the appraiser coach, Dustin Harris. Welcome everybody, Dustin Harris hanging out with you in the podcast chair. Got a great, uh, interesting, I think, uh, topic coming up for you. Want to first remind you that we are sponsored by Data Master. Data Master will save you 30 to 60 minutes per report. Go to datamasterusa.com for more information. Uh, a la mode will also save you time per report. Why? Because they are the leader in the software industry for appraisers. There's a reason they're a leader, folks. The tools are amazing. Go to alamode.com or 800 alamode. Finally, we are sponsored by OREP Insurance. OREP, of course, is the you know that I use for a reason. They save me lots and lots of money and they give me all kinds of benefits. Go to OREP.org for more information. Again, it's OREP.org. Uh, folks, we uh, have back on the program a good friend of mine, uh, individual that uh, um, that I look up to. Um, he has been appraising a few more years than me, about 25 years experience. He is uh, the owner operator of CMP appraisers, uh, appraisals rather in uh, California. Uh, he is a green home expert slash educator. And he's taking a very active role in uh, green home education across the nation. Uh, he also has a claim to fame. He attended one of my uh, masterminds in Vegas um, just to try it out and see how things uh, uh, see how things work there. And uh, again, good friend of mine, Mr. Mark Bueller. Welcome to the program, Mark. Thank you, Dustin. Thank you for having me on. And for I, the kind words. Man, I really appreciate you being on. Uh, this is a topic that uh, I'll be honest with you. Can I just be frank with you, my friend? Absolutely. Okay. So in, in Idaho, this is not as big a, a deal as it is in, say, Arizona or where you're at in California. Um, but um, it's one of these things that I'll admit this. I'll, I'll throw myself on the on the altar a little bit. Um, it's one of those things that because it's not a big deal, because it's not real prominent in the area that I appraise, it's not something that I've taken a huge interest in. But that being said, I know that in the future, it's going to become more and more of an issue. And that is green energy, that is energy efficient items that are going into homes. And specifically, we're going to talk a little bit about solar panels today. And I, and I even want to dig into windmills and, and things of that nature um, that we do see a little of here in, in Idaho. So uh, first of all, welcome to the program, Mark. And uh, what in the world, how, how did you become a green energy expert? <laughs> Well, like a lot of things that have happened to me over my appraisal career, it, it just kind of happened and fell into my lap and was just a, an extraordinary opportunity that I attended a course um, back in 2014, an appraisal institute course that was offered at my local MLS for CE credit, took it, found it to be very interesting, um, thought it was kind of a neat little niche that I would pursue. And... Um, I went forward with it. There was another class that was uh, offered up and I took that one. Uh, that was a earth advantage accredited green appraiser training. That was in 2016. And at that course, um, I was approached about um, teaching that course, presenting that course for earth advantage and subsequently build it green took that course. And I've presented that course twice. Um, I've been, diving deeply into the study of energy efficient homes, resource efficient homes, solar energy, and relating that to appraisers and the challenges that we face in that world. And it's true in certain markets like yours, it, it's not very prevalent. Uh, in my market, it's very prevalent. So it, it's, uh, it's, it's very helpful to my 
practice. And it's also, you know what, I really enjoy teaching and educating. That's something I found out about myself after all these years of grinding out forms and doing appraisals that I have a good time with it. It's yeah. fun. Yeah, it is. That's, uh, as you know, it's a passion of mine as well. And uh, so from one educator to another, uh, kudos to you for your uh, your self-education and then being able to share that with others. Let's uh, dig right into it. Let's talk a little bit about some of the questions and challenges that you're, you're hearing from other appraisers. Um, in fact, let me just set it up this way, Mark, and say, uh, you know, I, I, I rent a very small office that I do these podcasts from. I'm in the office right now. Uh, and it's, and it's in a much bigger building with a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of, uh, you know, just, just small businesses, if you will. And this is where I can kind of hide out and, and get to get my podcast done, my coaching, my mentoring, uh, you know, uh, uh, away from, from the busy appraisal office, which is a few minutes from, from me. Uh, and part of that is just down the hallway, uh, there happens to be a solar company, uh, a company that sells solar panels. And uh, the individual that uh, works in there, he and I have had interesting discussions. Um, interesting, I use with uh, air quotes, even though uh, this is audio and people aren't able to see them. When I say interesting, it's been a little bit of a challenge back and forth with him because, of course, he's a salesman. And uh, his big thing is he's out there talking about value. And, you know, you're going to want to put these solar panels on your roof because it's going to increase the the, uh, the value of your home. And And I've, you know, had talks with him about what value is and where value comes from. And in his mind, it's a pretty cut and dried thing. Value comes from a cost savings in his mind. If you save X amount of dollars over the, the next 10 years of the property, of the, of the lifespan of the property, then that's how much value it's going to add up front. And I say, eh, you know, okay, let's, let's maybe take another look at that. So let's first talk about that. Value and solar panels. There's got to be some value there, right? Yes. Solar panels have value. Um, Fannie Freddie guidelines do not permit us to give value to leased solar panels because the homeowner does not own the property. So um, it, it's, you know, but on owned solar in most markets, you can demonstrate value. Okay. So um, before we dive too far into that, let's, salesman, yeah. let's, let's back up for just a second because you talked about leased and owned. And I think that's probably the question number one, because from an appraiser's perspective, we're always looking at private personal property versus permanent real estate property, right? And 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 solar is such an interesting thing because it is permanently attached to the house. Okay. Yet the homeowner, if you will, or the seller may not own that that property. So what happens in a in an exchange where let's say it's for sale and the new buyer says, "Well, yeah, I'll buy the house, but I don't want the solar panels." What typically happens in that case? In my market, what typically happens is one of two things. The seller ends up buying out the lease or an agent that is well versed in the benefits of solar is able to transfer the lease and sell the benefits of let's say paying an $80 a month lease payment for your energy versus the $250 that you know the seller was getting charged prior to that mm, okay okay so there a lot of times that's transferred it's just a matter of working out the details as to how that happens Yes, it becomes a marketability issue for mm -hmm. the realtor. Okay. Some realtors don't want to touch touch the properties, you know, because they've had it's more work to get the deal done to okay. um, transfer that lease. But it's I don't think it's that big of a deal. It's it's happening here. But but as an appraiser, so from an appraiser's perspective, and that's really you know our listeners here with this podcast, we're we're talking to appraisers. Their responsibility in this case would be to find out whether it's leased or owned, and then how that affects things, right? Yes. The first question you want to ask when you see that their the home has solar panels, when I call to schedule an appraisal, I ask a lot, a, a litany of questions among them. Now, does the home have solar? Is it leased or is it owned? Okay. Most appraisers who know about lease versus own and the fact that we don't have to give value to lease breathe a big sigh of relief when that homeowner says they're leased because at that point they're relieved of any, okay. gotcha. uh, you know, duty to place value on that. What, what about, so what about this lease to own type thing? Let's say they're 90% paid off. Does that make a difference? In other words, they're still technically leased, but you know, there's only 10% more to pay off on this thing. Are you talking about solar panels with, that are financed? Right. Exactly. Yes. Well, that's a tricky one. Financed solar. If there's a, UCC one filed with the county, 
were not to give those value. Okay. Um, so it does take a little bit of digging, but owned solar, we give value to. Okay. So let's, and let's talk the about solar it. salesman is talking about the, the value of the savings, which is how we approach it when we don't have a sales comparison approach, we go to the income approach okay. and, and utilize that. And see, that's the other thing is, is uh, let's talk, first of all, most appraisers are most familiar with sales comparison approach. That's what we typically rely on most heavily with the three approaches to value. So let's talk about that. Let's, uh, let's say a, an appraiser runs into a situation. It's, it's very common in Idaho. Um, it, it may not necessarily be so in California, but in Idaho, it's not uncommon to have a subject property that the, the property that I'm appraising has solar and and really there's no true comparables in the neighborhood or the surrounding area that has solar to compare it to. So, you know, the typical appraiser might sit back and say, well, there's no value here because there's no comps. That happens very often. And that is my mission to to teach and to educate people that there is more than one approach to value. And we should look at all of them in this case. I understand that certain markets don't recognize it in the market, but let me ask you this. If you're going to buy a house that had a $250 a month electric bill to keep your house warm in Idaho in the winter time, and there's another house down the street and it's going to cost $0 per month to keep the house warm in the Idaho winter. Is there any value? In <laughs> no that? doubt. No, I mean, I know where you're going with this, and 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 frankly, <laughs> you you sound like the guy down uh, down the hall from me, uh, and I get it. <laughs> you know, there's there's no doubt that there's value uh, to to a buyer or a uh, you know an owner of a home in that situation. That being said, from an appraiser perspective, dang, that's hard to prove. Yes, it is. However, there are methods out there okay, that let's... we need to learn. And, and put into play. Let, let's talk on a very, very surface level. Keep in mind, this is audio number one. So I don't want to get into a lot of statistics and numbers and that kind of a thing because we're not going to follow, frankly. Second of all, our time is limited. Uh, and third of all, I don't want to downplay the fact that, uh, that that you've got a whole course on this kind of thing that I would encourage appraisers to take. Right? We don't want to we don't want to uh, reveal the uh, the ending already and, and and jump to the punchline. But on a top level, talk to me about some of the things that appraisers should be considering when it comes to value when they run into solar or other green energy items. Well, we have a the lack of data is our number one issue. The, the problem there. Um, the MLSs are increasingly adding green fields into our, you know, the data that we rely on. Uh, there's 698 MLSs in the country, and they're slowly starting to adopt it in, in the areas where this is more prevalent and more pain point for everybody. So we need to be aware, you know, and, and we need to have verifiable data that there's solar on the home, it's owned, it's leased, it's this old, it's this much. And there's income approach tools that we can use. Um, PVValue.com, I teach this one. It's a, it's a discounted cash flow. It calculates the net present value of the energy to be produced over the, the warranted lifespan of the solar array. So it's a neat little tool. It kicks out a number. There's one number. Mm -hmm. If you can find some sales in your area, they don't have to be within the last six months, within a mile, you know, and, and it fit the Fannie Freddie guideline box, go back and find one somewhere, anywhere, you know, um, maybe it's outside of your market. Maybe it's two years ago. And then you can easily find a sale that didn't have that amenity and, and determine what the, the adjustment should be. I think that is great, so great advice. A, I, I, I have a way to, to I'm, do I'm it. channeling my, my Tim Anderson, uh, even though Tim's not, not not on the program with me, but I think Tim would say, uh, make sure that that is a, a a a similar property in the sense that same highest and best use. Uh, you know, it's a competing property, even if it's two years old, three years old, what have you. Even if it's a different neighborhood, make sure it's truly a competing property. But but once you find that, uh, I think you can tell a, a lot from from another sale as compared to similar sales within uh, that particular neighborhood or particular time period, right? Yes. And, you know, appraisers are creatures of habit and we know the market approach inside and out, the sales comparison approach. You know, we just have to consider that there are two other approaches yeah. and, and, and use those as sensitivity against each other. Maybe the sales approach is a secondary consideration in this. Right. right. Um, Great advice. Versus the income approach. Great advice. Okay. We're talking with Mark Bueller. He is a, a, a green 
I, I don't even, I'm, I'm not even sure how to announce this. Uh, uh, tell, tell me, what is your official title, Mark? Well, I guess if I had an official title, I would be considered a, um, an energy efficient educator. There you go. Um, okay. I, you know, I, I, you're, you're, I'm you're, in the education area now. I'm an appraiser. I okay. teach appraisers. I teach realtors about energy efficiency and value. And you're, you're being modest because I would say you're a green, um, a, a green energy efficient expert, uh, not, not just an educator, but, uh, but you truly know a hell of a lot more about this stuff than I do. Um, but uh, I want to get back to some of the details that, uh, that appraisers should be considering when it comes to solar, when it comes to energy efficient items. But first want to pause here and remind you, of course, that we are sponsored by three great companies, one of them being Data Masters. Speaking of data and speaking of the um, the importance of data in your report. As an appraiser, you want that data and you don't want to spend your time typing that data in. Data Master will save you 30 to 60 minutes per report. Why? Because it downloads all of that information directly from your MLS. Uh, Mark talked about 700 MLSs across the country, and a lot of those use Data Master. Uh, it may or may not be yours. Check it out. Go to datamasterusa.com. But if it is in your area, you need to be using Data Master. Why? Because it will save you time. It will save you efficiencies. It will allow you to be able to do more with less. Again, it's datamasterusa.com. I'm using a la mode software. I don't know what you're using, folks, but if it's not a la mode, you need to consider a la mode. Why? A la mode is one of those companies that truly looks at what appraisers do on a regular basis, the nuts and bolts of what we do, and, and makes it easier. That's what a la mode does for me. It saves me time, and being self-employed, uh, Time is money, and and you know what I'm talking about, appraisers. If you're not using Alamo Mode, check them out. Go to alamo.com or 800 Alamo. Mode. One more time, it's alamo.com or 800 Alamo. Mode. Finally, we are sponsored by OREP Insurance. OREP is the insurance that I switched about two and a half, three years ago, and saved money every single year I worked with OREP Insurance. Why is that, folks? Because they are insurance brokers. They're not just a single source. They will go out and they will scour the, the market and find the best deal for you, the best coverage and the cheapest price. That's what OREP will do for you. That's what OREP has done for me. Check them out. Go to OREP.org. That's O-R-E-P dot org. And welcome back to the program, Mr. Mark Bueller. Thanks for joining me today, Mark. Thank you, Dustin. We are talking green energy. Uh, Mark is coming to us from California, where he is an expert in energy efficient items, including solar. And uh, he is uh, teaching appraisers across the nation. Um, let's just pause here before we jump back into it, Mark. And uh, what do you have for appraisers out there as far as offerings? Uh, if they wanted to know more about green energy, which is becoming more and more important with regard to our jobs, whether or not you become an energy efficient expert, uh, in your market or not, you need to know how to value uh, energy efficient green items, uh, including solar, because they're becoming more and more uh, prevalent. Uh, if we want to learn more, Mark, and, and want to maybe take one of your courses, where would we go? What What do you have uh, for appraisers to learn more? Um, currently, I'm teaching uh, credited green appraiser training in California only at this point. Uh, I just taught one in San Diego in May, and I was just informed that I have two more trainings coming up in the Bay Area in the fall. I am doing a webinar, a short webinar for McKissick um, that will be live in August. Um, I have just uh, gotten a solar course approved by the state of California. It's a four-hour CE course um, devoted strictly to solar. That's what I'm doing so far. The California just is in the process of changing the building code as of the year 2020, we're going to be con uh, all new construction is going to have to be built what they can consider a uh, net zero energy, mm -hmm. meaning that the home has to produce as much energy as it uses. And the only way to do it here in a densely packed area of California is solar. We don't have room for windmills or geothermal or any of those kind of things. So for California appraisers, it's going to become a real, 
a necessity to become informed about this stuff because we do have a competency rule and we do run into homes with solar quite often here. Yeah. So I, th- I think that's important to point out. And I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out in, in the sense that, uh, you know, your focus right now, just because that's where you're residing is, is California, but you're expanding across the country. As you expand the cost across the country, I'm sure you're finding different areas have different focuses. For example, uh, I would say in the, uh, in the great state of Idaho, uh, solar is probably the most prevalent uh, alternative form of energy. Uh, however, uh, up till about three or four years ago, the prevalent way to to get energy here in Idaho was windmills, private windmills. Uh, these are companies that would, uh, you know, for ten to twenty thousand dollars, they would come and put a, a, a pretty large windmill on your property. Um, it was a little bit noisy, which I thought was interesting. Uh, you know, you're constantly hearing the hum of the windmill, but of course it's generating a lot of times, not just the electricity that the house uses, but also uh, giving back a little bit, if you will, to the, their original source of the electric company and, and getting uh, some type of rebate for that as well. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the future uh, for green and appraisers. Uh, what do you see in the future for appraisers with re- regard to green energy? Well, obviously it's increasing. Uh, energy bills are not going down. They're going up. Um, in many, many states across the country, we're seeing a solar increasing places that I didn't really think I would see it as much in places like New Jersey, um, Arizona, Hawaii, obviously are, are uh, have a lot of solar there. Uh, a lot of states have have enacted um, renewable energy programs. Currently, there's 29 states that have program goals in place, and California uh, wants to generate their electricity from renewable energy sources, meaning the sun, wind, rain, geothermal, even waves and tides. California has a goal of half of our energy being uh, renewable by 2030. Hawaii by 2045, they want to be 100% renewable, and they do use wind power out there. Uh, so it's, it's, it's definitely on the rise. Certainly in some areas, it's not happening. You'll see it right through the middle of the country. They're, they don't have any renewable energy uh, goals or programs in place. But if California is considered you know, on the cutting edge or leading edge of this, I think a lot of states will follow. I was uh, privileged to speak at an event in Vermont, and they're very, they're very much up on it. They're and ahead of us in California in a lot of ways. Uh, New England has some really nice, really good programs going on right now um, that could help us with the data. Um, they've got a program called Helix that is uh, it integrates energy efficiency items and home energy scores into the MLS. It auto populates the MLS. There's a movement about from uh, greenthemls.org and RISO, which is the real estate standards organization, to integrate like a common language into the MLS reporting to get these green features in there. Because without the data, appraisers really don't have anything to go on. Talk to me about a situation, uh, just hypothetically, let's say uh, my listeners right now are driving around taking comp photos for their typical, you know, tracked home, and, and they're kind of listening with one ear and, and you know, kind of paying attention to the, the, the photographs that they're taking on the other. And, uh, you know, maybe it's going in one ear, one out the other and saying, well, you know, this is nice. That's cool. But, you know, solar is not really a thing in my area. I don't really care that much. And then, you know, two weeks from now, all of a sudden they get an assignment, they show up, it's a it's a solar uh, house. It's, it's a house with solar, um, and they think, oh yeah, that appraiser coach guy had uh, that Mark Bueller guy on. Uh, maybe I should have paid a little bit more attention. Um, what's the first step for an appraiser who runs into a situation that uh, you know? Obviously, the first step is is it leased or owned? Let's say we get past that step, it's owned. Okay, they own the uh, they own the solar system. An appraiser really has no experience with solar in the past. Do they turn down the assignment? Do they say they're not competent? Is there a way to become competent? What would you? What advice would you give that appraiser? Well, I get that phone call from you know my friends here and from other people now that I'm you know out there and people that have taken my class and I harp in on the competency rule. You know, it's if if you can't become competent, if I can't make you competent on this phone call in the next ten minutes, or you can't gain competency, I would suggest that you decline it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, beyond that, let's not decline every house that we have with solar. There's You can self-educate. Um, there's a number of great documents that I could uh, point the listeners to right now. 
the appraisal foundation valuation advisories. Advisory number six speaks to competency. Advisory number seven, if you want to dig into that one, it was put out in 2016. It goes deep into valuation methods of not just solar, but you know, energy efficient items. Um, and we do within our software, all of our software providers have the Appraisal Institute residential green and energy efficient addendum, both for, for residential and commercial. That document right there, if you just take some time looking through that and at the very last couple pages of that, there's a bunch of glossary and resources that you can click on. It's a wealth of information in there. You know, so you can be self-taught, you can come to a class, you can, you know, do an online class. I think you just need to be at this point to be aware of it. And I get it that people in Idaho and Wyoming, it's it's just not a part of their world, Um, but it might behoove you to get out in front of that because. Well, it's becoming a part of our world. I'm running into it more and more. Yeah. And the, you know, the courses that are out there that are available, the Appraisal Institute has a, a register of people that have taken these courses. Idaho and Wyoming have a total of zero appraisers on their, on their list of people that have taken the appraisal Institute valuation of sustainable buildings, professional development course load. Um, there's 140 of them in California. So, I mean, that's how many people have taken that course. I've taught 50 people in my courses so far. There's not very many of us out there that are really, you know, educated unless we're doing it on our own. And, those two resources right there, those appraisal foundation valuation advisories and the appraisal institute green and energy efficient addendum are the first things I would look at. Sounds like a good niche to be in, Mark. Yes. Um, you know, in, the, in New England, appraisers command a higher price for those appraisals. I don't know that that's happening nationwide, but out there they do recognize the additional work involved in, in putting something like this together. Yeah. Well, I appreciate speaking of putting work together. I appreciate all the work that you've put into this and the education that you're performing and, and being willing to share it here on the appraiser coach podcast. Thank you, my friend. Oh, you're welcome. You know, I just want to be a resource uh, and, you know, try and, help solve this problem. Well, it's becoming more and more of a problem and more and more uh, um, poignant of a problem. And and appraisers need to, as you said, uh, get out in front of it. Uh, Before I let you go, Mark, I just want to ask your opinion. And you can can say anything you want here. This has not been prepped. Um, You know, one of the things that we do uh, here at the Appraiser Coach is uh, the mastermind. And uh, uh, one thing that we've been doing lately is allowing people that are interested to attend a mastermind and just find out a little bit about what it's all about. Um, and uh, whether or not it's something for them and something they would want to join in the future. Um, you had an opportunity to attend one uh, months ago, uh, and I appreciated you flying out from California to uh, Las Vegas, where we met together for a day. And uh, uh, unsolicited, just curious what your experience was with that. I thought it was a great time to, to sit and speak with some high-level appraisers that really are focused on um, building their businesses. For me, I'm looking to build in a different way, and I, I hope I could add some value to that conversation you because did. I have taken you know my business from the one man shop to the large shop and then contracted it back down again. But you know, there's some people in these rooms that are, you know, <laughs> they're younger than I am, and they've got a lot more vim and vigor. They, you know, <laughs> they're going to go out there and make it happen, conquer the, the tools, world, right? <laughs> the tools that they share in there, you know, it's good stuff. Yeah, and and some of the actually, um, there was a gentleman in the room who was you know more a, along my uh, demo um, that's done a lot of phenomenal stuff on the education side and on the appraisal side. So um, I got a lot of value out of it, and I hope I you know brought something to the table myself. Absolutely, I think it was uh, yin and yang. It was uh, give and take, and uh, and I appreciated you being there. Your expertise was uh, was welcomed, folks. If you're interested in uh, joining us for a future mastermind, reach out to my assistant. Uh, you can just email her at the assistant at the appraisercoach.com. That's the assistant at the appraisercoach.com. And uh, a lot of times we do have openings. Uh, individuals that uh, uh, can't attend for whatever reason, we got an open seat, and we would love to plug you in that seat and. and 
and uh, uh, let you try it out and see if it's something that uh, would be beneficial to you and your business. Mark, uh, once again, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you being willing to be on today. Uh, it was me reaching out to you and uh, and kind of opening up this uh, uh, this dialogue. And I think this is a an important topic that appraisers need to be aware of and probably more aware of as they as they go into the future. So, uh, uh, good luck with your education and thank you again for joining us. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach Podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the all-star team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value. Can yep. you can you see me? So if I if I roll my eyes at you, you'll. I'm uh, not. I'm not doing it that way. Oh, okay. Uh, should sure. I log on there? So I, can, I can pick my nose, and and you won't know. And I just no, it's good. I just, yeah. I just don't know if I. I'm should. in my garage, dude. I mean, I didn't know that if we were doing like. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Um, that's where I work. That's <laughs> I think great. I, told you that. <laughs> I love it. Okay, cool. All right, I'm gonna hit mute. There ain't and, no uh, car in here. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yet. All right. Uh, hit mute and uh, we will uh, we will dive right in. And, and like I say, let's shoot for about uh, 30 minutes if that uh, if that works for you. And that way I can get on my other call when I need to.